I'm Adrienne Nolan Smith, founder of Wellbe, and this is Amy Valpone. You may know her as the Healthy Apple. Um, she's a cookbook author, a blogger, and a wellness advocate. Um, she has got a completely crazy and unbelievable <laughs> health journey over the last 10 years. You know, one of the missions of, of Wellbe is to inform, inspire, and empower people to take control of their health. And so mm -hmm. by sharing your story about everything that you've gone through and how you did take control of your health, yeah. I think that really helps others to say, wow, I, I actually have some of those things. Maybe I can do that too. Um, and so another piece of it is really to what we say, um, demand a system that supports you. So that means, you know, as you mentioned when you were telling your story, that there's a world out of the apartment or out of the house that is so full of toxins. If you ever go outside, you're basically fighting an uphill battle. Or if you ever go to a restaurant, you're fighting an uphill battle. And so knowing how much it reduces chronic disease and chronic disease costs to stay well initially and never get sick, why isn't the system out there sort of doing more to support us in that? So that's the, what, what we mean by demand a system that supports you. So whether that's regulatory change or better products, after everything that you've been through and everything that you know, what would you say are sort of the biggest challenges at the system level that you try to change if, you know, as a wellness advocate? Yeah, well, I think the food system is changing so much. I mean, it's pretty amazing seeing a lot of the new products come out, a lot of organic, non-GMO, you know, the focus on a really cleaner sustainability, even with cleaning products, different things like that. So that's been wonderful. You know, while there's still a lot of junk out there, I think the push for, you know, people understanding more what organic is and more of what clean eating is, we eating less of the processed foods, more of the whole foods. Um, so I think that's great, but I think, there's still this piece of the system that's so allopathically trained, Western medicine. You know how to treat an, a symptom, and that's what you do. They don't listen to really what's going on in the body. And so through this journey, I've realized that, you know, food is great, supplements are great, all these things are great, but you, it's really the full approach. It's your sleep, it's your stress. So I think there's a huge shift coming, um, which I've seen with a lot of clients and a lot of people, but I still think that the system and, you know, advertisements you see and all of this, it's still so based on here's how to fight allergies, take this. Here's how to, you know, fight the flu, get the flu shot. It's all this uh, crazy fear mentality, whereas functional integrative medicine is about healing and not the fear, right? So it's trying to really look at what's going on and look at that fear-based stuff and really not ignore it, you know, because it's hard to kind of just shut it out, but just realize what it is and then really look for, you know, more of the holistic approach. I didn't even know for the first five years there was this other side of medicine. Like it was just like, you're sick, here's an antibiotic. You're sick, here's this. You take it, get the flu shot. Get, that's all. That's how we were. We're all brainwashed as kids. That's because that's all our parents knew. What would you say is your like your your can't miss stuff that you do for yourself? Oh boy! So I just wrote about this on my website, and it was like uh, actually very well received. But I was a little nervous to write about it. So coffee enemas, organic coffee enemas, um, pretty much saved my life when I had Lyme disease. I mean, my die off was so bad. I just was ready to jump out the window. So die off is like when you're killing the bugs in your body. The ammonia from the bugs rush from killing them rushes to your brain and you have like a migraine times a thousand and you feel like you're just going to slam your head against the wall. And so when you do an organic coffee enema. An enema, just so that everybody knows, is. In your butt. In your butt. Right. It has to be organic. Um, the coffee hits your, um, you know, it's like your gallbladder, right? And your liver. And so it hits it and does a, it pulls the bile out. And so it's like, it does a flush. It's the, it's the best way to detox your body. You know, coffee enemas are great. Also infrared saunas are great. Help detoxify the body because your skin is your biggest organ. Um, infrared saunas. So um, also Epsom salt baths, great way to detox. Again, detoxing through the skin. Uh, so those are three of my favorites. You mentioned something on your website called the MTHFR mm -hmm. gene. And I'm just learning about this because it's super fascinating. And my stepmother has it as well and a few mm -hmm. other people I know. And I believe it's, I mean, you can explain it, but I think it's 35% mm -hmm. of people have this yeah. gene and it makes it very hard to 
pass toxins through the organs or exactly, tell me yeah. a little bit more about it. And I go into um, a lot of detail on this in my book, Eating Clean. Um, Mark Hyman, who's a medical doctor, um, really put it into great words in my book. Your DNA, you have two SNPs for every DNA. So MTHFR is how you methylate. How you methylate is how you detox on a daily basis. That car exhaust, that top water, the plastics that was surrounding your food. Some people have a handicap to detox. And so they accumulate toxins in their body. And then all of a sudden they have arthritis or eczema or you know, some kind of health issue. And the doc, Western medicine doctors are treating the symptoms, but the underlying symptom is the toxicity. Right. It's not the symptom. And so what you have to do is you have to take a methylated folate and a methylated B12 supplement because regular folate and um, regular B12 are actually like toxic to your system if you have this. It's a simple blood test and I talk about how to get it in my book. Um, and no one knows about it because Western medicine does not test for it. And it literally is the cause for so many health issues. And so what's happening, which is really scary, pregnant women who have this are taking a prenatal vitamin. A prenatal vitamin has folate and B12 in it, which is the wrong forms that they need, which is toxic and can harm the baby. So it can cause birth defects. No, and so a lot of brands are starting to put methylated folate, methylated B12 in. If you're taking a multivitamin, a multivitamin, I would think twice about it and really get the MTHFR test done before you start taking that. You know? So how do you, you, you mentioned that Western medicine doesn't really test for it. So yeah. how would somebody, you know, watching this who has a, a regular, you know, conventional GP and maybe a conventional OBGYN um, go and get this test? I don't think it's like, Thyroid, right? Thyroid. Western medicine doesn't understand reverse T3. It's a the bit one of the biggest pieces of your thyroid. They just test test, uh, test T, TSH, T3, T4. That tells you pretty much nothing. You need T3, right? You need to know the reverse T3. But the Western medicine, as many times as you will ask them, they don't know how to interpret it, so they won't run the test. Same thing with MDHFR. This is what's so wild. It's like there's this whole other side of medicine with these all these different tests, that's really what blew my mind. Because I was like, you're telling me I don't have it, and then you're showing me there's all this, you're showing me, a, it's like a deeper look as to what's really going on. So it's something that you probably advise someone to find more of an integrative oh, definitely. Yeah. practitioner. Definitely functional medicine, integrative medicine, yeah. And they'd be able to get this uh, this test? Yes, it's just like methylation, so MT, you can just say MTHFR. Okay, yeah. wow. I love learning everything there is to learn right now about epigenetics mm -hmm. because there's so much there and also knowing that something like this gene if you have it you just have to adjust your life and do things differently it's not like a a death sentence right it's oh, just it no, explains why You're supporting your body more. right like the person next to you might have the same toxin exposure as you do, but is able to sort of process it all and function. And you're totally crippled by it. And it's kind of like this, woe is me, why me? And sometimes there's no explanation. Sometimes there is one. And so if, if it's this gene, then at least you're like, oh, okay, well, I do have to do so much more work, but at least there's a reason, you know? Completely. And I, that's the ex exact example I give when I'm speaking. I say, you're, we could be twins growing up in the same home. We eat the same thing. We do the same thing. We're exposed to the same things. You get chronically sick and I'm fine because, you know, I can detox the mold that we're exposed to. I can detox the heavy metals that we're eating in our seafood. You know, the apples that we're eating that are non-organic, all those pesticides, I can detox them out of my urine and my feces in my sweat. Your body cannot. So you're holding on to all those toxins. And it's not about dieting or going on a cleanse. That's not detoxing. It's eating organic. It's, you know, getting a water filter for your tap water. You know, there's so right. much in your tap water that's toxic. Fluoride and chlorine and that all destroys the lining of your gut, which leads to something called leaky gut, which leads to autoimmune disease. And so you can think all these doing these little things are crazy or like avoiding plastics because you have hormonal issues or, you know, but when you start to realize all these little pieces are what add up to the big piece of as to what's going on with these symptoms, you want to start doing these little things. So, yeah. So your idea of detoxing is more just clean living. It's like active, yeah. clean living. Yeah. So those are that I've never done any of that. That's that's a cleanse or a, you know juice fast. I don't I don't believe in any of that. I don't do any of that because first of all, if you're not do, if you're not doing organic juice, you're just eating condensed pesticides in a juice. It's like wine. If you're not eating organic wine, you're eating condensed pesticides from grapes, right? And so for that's a cleanse, you know. But that's completely different. Detox, like the definition of detox, is literally like supporting your body's ability to detoxify on a daily basis. Like, so how can you lessen the body burden on your liver on a daily basis? 
what are the things that you can do? And we talked like the orga- eating organic, you know, getting enough eight hours of sleep, number one, is like, you know, helping all those organs because your organs detoxify at different times of the night. Americans have an idea that that if it's not something insurance pay for pays for and it involves your health oh, in any God, way, yes. that they're just not going to do it. Yeah. So I think the things like FSA and HSA and stuff is an, is an important way for us to be able to go to any sort of practitioner who can help us and at least have a credit card to swipe um, or just to re- start thinking about it differently. And if everything you do is health, then forget just separating the finances between insurance and personal. It's just all totally. whatever it is. But has it been difficult for you to go and get these sorts of care that will actually cure you, these more functional medicine doctors, given um, insurance issues? You know what? I'll be very honest. It's not what you want to hear, but the second that I stopped going to people who took my insurance is the second I started to heal. So I just get the very basic insurance and I don't, I don't, I pay out of pocket for everything because no one that took my insurance was helping me. I spent all my twenties only going to people in network because it was like, who can I go to? It was like all about money. Right. And now once I like lifted that and I was like, okay, no, I really need someone that can really help me because once you're hitting a wall with like person after person after person that's in network, you're just like, this is not getting me anywhere. So I literally just take the lowest of um, basic care so that I get, I don't, I mean, I don't even get dental. I pay for that out of pocket because I go to a, you know, a whole a holistic dentist as well. One functional medicine doctor I'll go to once a year and just get like blood work done. You know what I mean? Just to make sure I'm okay. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I just pay out of pocket for him and then out of pocket for, you know, blood work or whatever, urine tests, whatever it is that they need to be testing. It's not the ideal, but you know, you do it. 10 years ago, if you told me that, I would have been like, lady, you're crazy. Why would I ever spend? But when you get to a point where you're so low, you're like about to die, you don't care. You're like, all my money goes to food and health. And yeah, you just, you never want to go back to where you were. I have a question about your book. So because you wrote this cookbook called Eating Clean, um, do you find that it's hard, and you live in New York City, do you find that it's really hard to eat out? Like, what was, What is your advice for people <laughs> that eat out and how to deal with yeah. not being a total pain in the butt to everybody that they're eating with, but also to, you know, really eat nourishing foods? You know, I think I mentioned in my book, I've lived in New York for 13 years. I think I've eaten out five times, I think. <laughs> Partially because there was nothing available up until, like, very recently. Now there's some organic places that are really great. Um, and it's not that I'm like, you know, so I have to eat everything organic when I go out to eat. But um, I think for me, I was getting small intestinal bacteria overgrowth and candida from everything. And a lot of restaurants use canola. It's really the oils and the salts that bother me in restaurants. They all use table salt, which is highly inflammatory. They all use canola oil, which is highly inflammatory. So it wasn't even so much the food that I was reacting to. I was reacting to those ingredients. And also they put sugar in like dressings and honey and all, you know, like cheap brands of honey and like all these things that were affecting me in dressings and marinades. And so it was like these, the little things, it wasn't like the organic chicken that was bothering me. It was a marinade on top of it. And so I had to start just being careful about those kind of foods. Um, And then I just started going to more cleaner restaurants, like cleaner restaurants. So uh, restaurants that serve organic or more greens. I don't go to places that serve salads or anything like that because it's just too easy to get parasites for me. No salad bars. I also do no salad bars because yeah. of parasites, but that's only, I think, something that people who have had parasites are willing to do, mm-hmm. right? Like totally. I have a lot even of my friends. Bars, even ju- uh, yeah, no one cleans, they don't clean that thing. It's yeah. the easiest way to get a parasite. It's a whole nother level. And I think people that haven't had a parasite or don't know they have a parasite are like, I can't believe it. Aren't, you know, greens are healthy. Yeah. But, you know, my, my hope is that more places that, you know, have quality nutrients, but also have cooked greens. Because yeah. that would just make so everything important. so much easier to I can't eat out. You're saying this. I feel like I thought, thought I was the only person that felt that way. When you go through something and you see how screwed up a lot of these systems are food system, medical system, whatever you're like, and everyone else is kind of like asleep to it. You can tell people all day there's parasites and salads. They're not going to listen. Like in my 20s, I wasn't going to listen to you. I'd be like, lady, you're crazy.